Hey guys, Paul with Weapons of the World here, and today we're going to be talking about the Soviet heavy machine gun, the DSHK. You guys have probably seen this in a lot of video games and movies and TV shows and all that, and so now we're going to actually talk about it. So let's have a little brief discussion about the service history and the design of the DSHK. It's been in service since 1938. It was designed by uh, Vasily Degtorov and Georgi Spigen, uh shortly before World War II, or before the 38, I should say 1938. It was manufactured in the Tula arsenal in so the Soviet Union. Ooh, that is considerably loud. Let's turn that down. Uh, it had over 1 million units built. Its overall weight, the gun itself, is just over 74 plant pounds. But with this wheel-mounted carriage, you're talking about a whopping 346 pounds. So this carriage literally weighs almost three or four times more than the gun. I can't do math that good in my head. <laughs> Overall length is 64 inches with a barrel length of 42 inches. And theoretically, you can use this as just a one-man crude gun. However, just like in the West, we have... or they have, I should say, gun crews. Uh, that would usually be two to three men for this particular weapon. It shoots the 12.7 by 108 millimeter round, which is basically a uh, 50 caliber round with a slightly longer case. It uses a long stroke gas, uh, gas piston system. You can see the piston right beneath the barrel here. And it also has this wacko feeding mechanism that I want to talk about. So let's cut away and do that. Now, let's slow it down to about 50. When you fire the gun, you'll see that it has the disintegrating links right here with the rounds inside. Now, you can see every time I fire the gun to extract the round, it goes back, and then it to chamber the round, it goes forward and takes it out of this revolving cylinder type mechanism. I honestly don't know what to call it, but it's just a feeding mechanism that acts mostly as a very strange way to separate the link from the bullet itself so to allow the gun to feed and in fact uh, when it's inside here past this point so the second bullet if you're counting from the very top past the second bullet the link has nothing to do with the round it's completely detached and it's encased inside the actual frame of the cylinder on the top so this is strange just because you don't see it on guns uh, really at all. I can't think of a, at least any major gun like the DSHK that uses this sort of feed mechanism. If you guys happen to, let me know in the comments because I'd love to know more about this. Uh, I'll go into what they changed on the DSHK here in just a moment when I talk about the history. Other than that, uh, you can see the fire controls back here. Uh, just a pretty standard uh, spade grip with the trigger being here and here. Right beneath is the charging handle, however, when you reload the gun, generally speaking, they would take a spent shell casing, and you'll see just here in a second, put it in the actual charging handle to rack the slide back. Now they did this uh, mostly because when you have this spade grip at the very bottom, it didn't always work. Uh, and it was much more reliable and simple just to put the case here on the end just inside this little nub and rack it that way as if it was a normal side charging uh, machine gun however you could use the bottom spade grip if you wanted also the safety is right here it just acts like a normal flip safety so really nothing special about that when you have this on the wheeled carriage like you do right now uh, you can add this metal plate and this added a ton of weight to the carriage uh, so really adding to the 340 some odd pounds um, and it really didn't work that good uh, most most rifle fire from anywhere from about a hundred meters away would almost always go through this armor uh, some machine gun rounds or pistol rounds wouldn't uh, along with any sort of explosive round like a Mm, Panzerfaust or Panzer Shrek would absolutely just 
obliterate this armor. Excuse me, I'm trying to burp here. Ah, dadgum Dr. Pepper. But this really added a lot of weight to the gun, and it was sometimes removed, kind of sometimes. It, some troops would leave it on, some would take it off. It kind of depends, honestly. Now, you can also put this on a tripod. This would fold down into what is basically an anti-aircraft position. You could take off the shield and then add the anti-aircraft sight. And you'll see this a lot with uh, DSHKs, especially in Iraq and Afghanistan. A lot of the times they'll use this tripod and fire at our troops like that. Other than that, this gun is relatively simple. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about the history. Now... Again, like I said, it was designed by uh, Vasily Dekturov and Grigori, excuse me, Sp Spagen, Spagen, good enough. Uh, and a little history on that. Originally, it was just Vasily uh, designing this firearm, and he originally just called it the DSH, uh, but or the DS, I'm sorry. But to make a long story short, he had Grigori... Uh, come and help him and they he added some modifications and improved the design and the end result being this DSHK which was almost immediately adopted by the Soviet Red Army uh, and was mounted on tanks vehicles uh, just about anything really there were some problems with the gun being mounted on light uh, light armored vehicles uh, if they weren't heavy enough or the frames weren't built solid enough to absorb the recoil, then the DSHK would just rattle it so much that it it just wasn't accurate at any sort of range. But it would work, so they mounted it on whatever, basically. This gun uh, has a lot in common uh, in both design and function with the... Well, not really designer. Let me retract that statement. In function with our American... Uh, Browning M2 heavy cal or heavy machine gun. It fires the 12.7 by 108 round, which is basically a 50 caliber round with an elongated case, and it has basically the same ballistics uh, as the the 50 cal. It has a range of about 2,000 meters or so, which is more than enough for really any sort of combat situation you could possibly get into. You you can't see 2,000 meters to be honest uh, in any sort of real environment. So that's more than enough. Now, it does feed from this 50-round detachable box, uh, which would hold all the links inside and just feed straight through. It's clipped onto the side where you can just lift it on and off, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward with that regard. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot to add to this, other than the fact that... Uh, just after World War II, they decided to improve the DSHK, and what they came up with is what's called the DSHKM. Now, what they did is uh, they took away this muzzle brake and added a different muzzle brake. And when you see these guns in movies and video games, 90% of the time you're going to be seeing the DSHKM. So you can tell that by the uh, kind of standard muzzle brake. You'll also be able to notice that this revolving feed mechanism is no longer present. With the DSHKM, what they did was they improved the design by adding just a standard feeding operation or feeding mechanism, much like a Browning M2, where you would just lift the top cover and feed in the link, rack the gun twice, and you're ready to go. This eased production and increased reliability, which was very important for the Red Army, and that's the most common variant that you'll see, especially today. Other than that, the DSHK and the DSHKM, excuse me, were both very reliable, very functional firearms that served the Red Army and all its basically police states and kind of really anything else you want to call it. Uh, it served it well, you know, no complaints. It's been used in basically every war since 1938 that the Soviets have even been remotely involved with. So, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and every war in between those. So, it, it's seen a lot of combat, and it's still used today. So, it's very, very fine weapon. I'd honestly say our Browning M2 is better, uh, but I can go into that in another video. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe below. Bye.